Hey, Snickerlands back in the house, yeah. Back in the house, as promised. We're going to do a few security stroke anonymity. Anonymous distros. And we'll just see what they do, okay? Because there's a lot of difference between them. Some have not been updated for a good couple of years, so there's only a couple, really. And I'm beginning to wonder, especially for the anonymous distros, if they're a bit too big for what you really want to do, okay? Really and truly. So the first one we're going to look at, anyway, today is Tails. Running from a live CD in virtual box, as I said before. Okay. Now this is an anonymous distro. It runs Tor and the network. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So if in, in theory, you should be able to browse the web, and nobody will know where you are. Now, there's a few little quirks that come up when you go through it. So yeah, all right. Anyway, we're gonna go quickly go through it. It's based on Debian, by the way. Okay, Debian. Yes. Right. Old style know me, so most users should know what they're looking at. So you chuck the disc in, it boots up, and this is what you get. You'll get a couple of notices up here in the right hand side when you first boot it up on the main screen, and one will say whatever and whatever, and you connect to the network. Now, if you're running in the virtual box like I am now, a couple of warnings will come up. Now, I'm going to tell you this anyway if you run it in virtual box, you're not going to be anonymous for a simple reason. The virtual box software can report back to what you're doing. Yeah, and your own machine can report back what you're doing, basically. So that's not going to be secure. So basically, you have to run it as, as a live CD in a real machine. Obviously, it's a bit difficult to record sometimes, okay? Okay, well, let's go through it in the MOOC, okay? My applications, you get all the usual Debian and stuff, right? Basic Debian, but it's all there, really. Yeah, yeah there. And the graphics still get Gimpage, you still get Inkscape, and you get OpenOffice, not LibreOffice, okay? Scribus is there for doing your stuff. Why you'd want an anonymous distro, I don't know, okay? Somebody tell me why. Simple scan for doing your scanning. Clause mail for your mail. Remember, you can have a persistent storage on this. Although, if you wanted to be anonymous, would you really want persistent storage? Because then somebody might be able to get into your storage. Do you see where I'm coming from? Thank you very much. There's the full office suite you can do your stuff with. Obviously, if you're going to take it around to somebody's house and you want to do some work in their house, you can see where it's coming from. But hey, there are other ways of doing it. Under program, you get Poe Edit. Poe. That comes through Panda. Okay. Sound and video, we get Audacity, Audio CD Extractor, Brazero, Movie Player, Pit TV, Sound Recorder, and Traverse. So, system tools, you can configure your persistent volume or delete your persistent volume. Your disk utility, log file views, file browser, system monitor. So we open up, just show you what it's going down. As you can see, it's not doing anything. It's not using any memory at all. It's Debian, so it's not going to be, is it? Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? Okay. And what else have we got here? <clears throat> I've got Tails, again, persistent volume, and documentation, and the installer. I wouldn't really want to install it, really. You want to go live, wouldn't you? And of course, you've got universal access with Dasher, your virtual keyboard, which obviously, if you don't want any keyloggers, you want to use that, and Orca screen reader and magnifier. Now, the main reason somebody's going to want to use one of these distros is basically to browse the web so nobody can see them. And it uses the Tor browser and its network for this. And up here we have, if I'll show you, connected to the Tor network. And up here we get the bandwidth graphic, message log, network map. So if I put on network map, you can see where I'm coming from. Can you see? There's all the relays that are online. There's quite a few, isn't there? Yeah. Okay. Also here we get the control panel. Make yourself a new identity, which will change your IP address. Now, when you boot up, you get the option of Mac spoofing as well here, so it will spoof your Mac addresses, that's another way of getting around it, yeah. But please remember, nothing is foolproof, okay? Nothing is foolproof. I've got nothing to hide, so I don't really have no use for using one personally, but somebody may do. You may want to order your wife's present for her birthday, and don't want anybody to know. Do you know where I'm coming from? Yeah, okay. So, the main reason we're going to use this is to browse the web. Now, you click here, use Ice Weasel to browse the web. Yes, it does. Just wait for it to boot up. I've got a little drinkage while it's doing that. Hang on a second. Mm -mm -mm. Very watery. Now, you'll find when you're using these live CDs and DVDs <clears throat> and this sort of distro, it won't be lightning fast, okay? And it just won't be. Because it's, it just takes time to connect to the network, really. I've used the Tor browser before, and sometimes it's sometimes not even worth using. Now, this is Tails at 0 0.23. It's the latest one out. If you're using the old one, please upgrade it because <clears throat> it needed some patches at big time, okay? Big, 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 big time. Let's tell you the bug fixes here when you boot up. 
<clears throat> you get various search engines. Sorry about my friend, it's very, very muggy here. You get start page HTTPS as your main one. You can use Google, DuckDuckGo, LX Quick is supposed to be one of the best ones out there. So I'm going to go there, okay? I'm going to go to LX Quick, see if it will take me to their page. And yes, it does. Now, remember the last distro done was MX14, which is based on NTX. Now, this is the first thing I found out, right? <clears throat> So, if I, okay, what do I first? I'll go to the BBC and you'll see how it comes out, okay? Now, this search engine is quite quick. It's quite pretty. Yeah, it's all right. Okay, there we go there. Go to the official site. Bloody, 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 blah. Oh. As you can see, it's a little bit slower than normal. Now, if you've used the BBC homepage before, you'll notice that it's slightly different. Yes, in layout. That's because it's blocking some of the stuff that's coming through. Yeah. You know what I mean. Okay. So anyway, that's enough of that. That one renders all right. Now, I was looking at MX14, wasn't I? So if I put in MX14, and we wait for it to go to where I'm coming from, we're going to have a little bit of fun. And it's not even there. Is it there? It won't come up in this search engine. Or will it? Let's have a look. No. Let's go back to a different search engine and you'll see what I mean. Go to Google. We'll put MX14 in there. No goodness, you can't find that, is it, really? Uh, here we are. Mepis, Mepis, Mepis. Here we go. Symbosis, which is the one it was called. And as you can see here, it told me all about it. So I will go to Get Info. We'll have a look. Lovely. Now, say, for instance, I want to go deeper into that and say, get help. We can have a look. It all comes up nicely, nicely. Now, yesterday when I used this, it wouldn't let me into the site. No, it would not. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Hmm, very interesting. But if we go to here, okay, and click on new identity, the next time I use it, it will change my IP address. So you can keep doing that all the time if you wanted to. You could, yeah. Go back to get info. Blah, 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 blah. All about Memphis. It's not doing it today. So obviously something's wrong. Now, what happened last time? It wouldn't actually let me browse the site. No, it wouldn't. I just don't know why. So, I don't know, it's, not, it's not coming up again. No, let's go back to MX14 again. See if I can get to do the same thing that it did yesterday when I was having a look. Okay, okay. MX14 final. Let's have a look here. All right, okay, yeah. It's all doing it lovely jubbly today. Hmm. Let's try that one there. Let's try the community. See if it, ah, right, here we go. Sorry, my IP address. This is not my real IP address, of course. This is the one that's spoofing. Has been blacklisted by HTTPBL, yes, which is part of the honeypot stuff, okay? Which basically blacklists certain things. This connection is untrusted. Well, I understand the risk because I'm running in the box, okay? I understand it's an exception. Yeah, for now we can have an exception. Yeah, 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 yeah. Confirm it's an exception. And it will take me to where I want to go, okay? Just wait for it to connect and you'll see what I mean. Now, this young man here, or whoever it is, been using this IP address is from the Netherlands okay so it's not me and he seems to be looking at some sites that you wouldn't normally have a look at okay no you wouldn't normally have a look at that would you no okay so if I go here again let's see if it can change my identity again all right then we'll go back and back again and we'll click on here again. Right. Somebody else wrote that again because my IP address has changed to 93184662227. And it's been blacklisted by Project Honeypot. Okay. Let's see who this time they've been looking at. Now, this time it's from somebody from Slovakia. Okay. Apparently. Okay. I'm just saying, apparently. And he seems to be into certain weirdo things. Okay. Or whoever's been using this. Okay. Now, you can see why some people are going to use the Tor browser and that. To get from these to these sites, as you can see from down here, it's all from Windows machines, all from Windows machines. So you can see how some people get a bit upset. Okay, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that's the one reason a lot of people do use this stuff. They want to go to places, but they don't want to be followed. Basically, no big deal to me, really. But there are other reasons to use it. Right now, the thing I have is here. I'm going to close my window. There we go. The problem I have here is. Do you need such a large system to do this? You want to force to quit? Not really, do you? 
you could just get a browser, a tall browser disc, really, couldn't you? Yeah. Anyway, we're going the rest of the way for it. I'm not too impressed with them, really. I've been through four of them in the past couple of days. So you get your home phone, a desktop computer, network, and to server, sets of files, and a system. It's all the usual stuff, but it's far, far too large, in my personal opinion. Yeah. But you just want it to go from the disc. You don't want to even look at your dear if you're going to use this sort of thing. Right. <clears throat> I'm not really impressed, to be too honest, because it's just too large for what you need to do. You don't need all this stuff. You really, really don't need all this stuff. If you just want to browse the web anonymously, do you really? No. I'm not going to rate it whatsoever. Obviously, if you want to use it, it's entirely up to you. But it's just not my thing, baby. It's not my bag. And I'm sure there's a better way of doing it. Yeah. If you've got any comments or you want to say anything about it, let me know. Yeah. Anyway, that's enough of that one. Okay, just click, click everything here. Get rid of him. Tell me what you think about towels and other anonymous distros. We're going to go through, go through a couple more next week with other distributions as well. We're going to mix and, mix and match, basically. Yeah, mix and match. Nicey, nicey. Sneaky Linux. Going out. See you later.